So you just picked up Total War Troy for free, and maybe it's your first Total War game ever, which probably means you don't have a fucking clue what you're doing. Well, hopefully this guide can help you out a little bit by teaching you how to manage your army on the battlefield and how to move them around efficiently and effectively. And while Total War Troy does have tutorials, they often leave out many, many important details. So hopefully this guide will fill in the gaps. I am going to assume that you have a basic knowledge of how to move your army and have done said tutorials. Now, let us begin. So you've arrived at your battlefield with your army in tow, you formed up and you're ready for action. Let's start with how to select your entire army. As you probably know, you can drag box over them and that'll select everything inside the box. But sometimes this isn't always possible because you can't always see your entire army. This is where the keyboard shortcut Control and A together will come in handy. This is the quickest way to select your entire army and is very useful at the start of a battle when you want to move the entire army forward towards the enemy. Well, what about if you want to select just a group of units or a few units? You could drag box over them, which is a perfectly fine way to do it. Obviously, Control A isn't going to work here, but we can select multiple units by holding down Control as we left click them. If you only left click them, you'll select that one unit at a time, but holding down Control will allow you to select multiple. So you can click on the unit itself, click on the little icon above the unit, or click on the unit card at the bottom of the screen to select those units as well. Either way, holding Control, very useful for selecting multiple units. Another useful way to select multiple units, which is mostly handy on the front line where everyone's in a straight line, is to use shift left mouse button. Click one point and then click a second point and you'll select everything in between those two points. You can see I've selected four units here, even though I only clicked on two. Again, you can do this on the unit cards themselves. You don't need to actually do it on the units. There are also a few more shortcuts that can be useful if you want to select certain groups of infantry. Control M for missiles. This will select all of your missile units, javelins, archers, whatever. There's also Control I, which will select all of your melee focused infantry. And there's also Control C, which will select your cavalry. Now, while these three could be useful, they're not that great because honestly, you'll probably want to be doing different things with different parts of your army anyway. A more useful shortcut is to use control double left mouse button on a unit type that you want to select. So these heavy swordsmen, I want to select them all. Control double left mouse button click. You can see I've selected all four units. I want to get all these spearmen. Control double left click. I've got them all now. This will only select the exact same units though. Those with the same name. Not the unit type like infantry cavalry missiles. Now to probably the most important keyboard shortcut you'll need to know here, how to move your entire army up all together. If you select your entire army and put them in a formation and then press right click to move them all up like the tutorial tells you to, this will happen. They'll all spread out in a long straight line completely losing the formation that you just spent two minutes putting together. It may also tell you to put them in a group. So if we bring our units back together here and then press G, you'll see above the unit cards, a little red line indicates they're all in a group together. Now when I right click around, they'll stay in that formation, if you can call it that, and at least won't go into a long straight line. This sounds good, right? But oh no, this can be a problem too because it can change the behavior of all the units. So we don't want to use this. There's a much simpler and easier way. Let's say we select our entire army with control A, then hover your mouse over any unit that you've selected, hold down Alt, left mouse button drag and you can move your army freely in the formation that you've arranged all of your units in then simply release everything to issue the order do try to get used to this command specifically because it is the best way to move your entire army around and also the best way to move groups of units around most of the time as well now furthermore if we do the same again alt left mouse button drag now hold control as well you can see my cursor changing this allows you to rotate the army on the spot Another very important factor so you can rotate to face the enemy army lest you end up at an awkward angle making you easier to flank. You probably want to release control and alt before you release left mouse button though otherwise you might accidentally make your army walk. If you do you can simply press the R key to make them run again so it's no big deal. But you can see here this enemy general is moving to my right let's say he was an entire army I need to rotate. You can see how quickly I can do this with these commands. I can move forward, backwards, sideways, rotate, whatever all with a few simple keyboard shortcuts, not using any kind of groups. As I said, this is one of the most important ones to get used to. It will take some muscle memory to really get the hang of it, so stick with it, but just try to remember to use it, and it'll definitely serve you well and make life a lot easier when trying to manage your army on the battlefield. 
And of course, you can do it with just a few units. It doesn't have to be the entire army. I can select these three flanking units, move them around with the Alt left mouse button drag, control to rotate, all works the same. Now, let's just talk about groups real quick. To group units up, you simply press G. This will put all selected units into a group, whether it's an individual unit or multiple. If you want to put them in a locked group, you can click the padlock at the top or press Control G. Locked and unlocked groups have different behaviors, which we'll talk about in a second. You can now use the one key on your keyboard to select your entire army or the group that says number one, two, three, four, whatever. Now, like I said, putting your entire army in a group isn't a great plan and isn't really that useful. What can be more useful though is breaking your army up into groups to make them a little bit quicker to select. So I could select the middle of my army here, the main force, to be group number one, my left flanking units group number two, and my right flanking units group number three, and my general group number four. So now I can select all of these quickly with the number keys, and personally I put my general key number four on my mouse so he's always easy to find. Now we can use the number keys to select the individual parts of our army and move them up as we wish. A little bit quicker than selecting them with just the mouse. Now one of the main differences between locked and unlocked groups is how they attack when you issue an order. Also, if it's locked it'll keep the formation exactly as it is, if it's unlocked you'll be able to move it around a little bit. But more importantly, if we attack a unit selecting our entire army in an unlocked group, watch what happens. We click an order on a unit and everybody goes to attack that one single unit. You can see all the red arrows heading towards that one unit, which means the whole formation is gonna kind of bunch up on itself slowly as it gets nearer the target, and everything's just gonna be a mess and we're really gonna lose the formation because everyone's charging at this one unit we've clicked. And this is because we're in an unlocked group. Now let's reset the formation by simply moving our army so they forget that previous order. And now we're gonna put them in a locked group and see what happens instead. You can see I'll click the padlock or you could press Control G. Now I'm going to click that unit. You can imagine there's an entire army here. You'll see the difference. All the red lines are nicely spread out and moving forward in the same formation. They're not all targeting in on the one unit that I've clicked on now. They'll focus on that unit that I've hit. So it's generally best to aim for the central one if you were to use this. Then what will happen is once all of your units get near enemy units, they'll auto target the nearest enemy unit. So in a way, they'll auto-target for you, meaning you don't have to worry about issuing attack orders. This might sound like a good thing, right? But it's really not, because sometimes the first unit that they come into isn't one that you want them to be attacking. Or it may be a unit like a missile unit that'll run away, and then they'll still be chasing after that missile unit, and then they'll get charged by an infantry unit instead, and they didn't charge them back. And you can see the weird behaviors here. This unit's turning to face it. There's just some weird behaviors that go on with these kind of locked groups. So long story short, I wouldn't bother using these locked groups to attack with. A better way to move your front line forward to attack is to use the Alt left mouse button drag method. So imagine there's an enemy front line here on the green line. I'm gonna select all of my units and then Alt left mouse button drag them forward, just like earlier when we were moving the entire army. Make sure you put the unit up to or behind the unit you want to attack so they reach them and then issue the attack orders individually. Attack, attack, attack attack. Now the entire front line will arrive together and all attack together and they'll attack the targets you want them to. If you issue individual orders on a front line that stood still, they'll all run one at a time so you'll end up with a diagonal staggered line which isn't great. So while you don't really need to necessarily use groups at all to be honest you can do just fine not using them, it's good to know how they work. So hopefully that all made some sense. Now to a few slightly more advanced things that are very useful. Firstly, how to select multiple units or even a single unit very quickly. You could individually control left click them or just do a quick drag box, like so. You can see how quickly I selected two units there just with a quick flick of my mouse. This is a good little practice to get into because you can select two or three or four or five units very quickly or just one unit very quickly rather than clicking on them. This can definitely be faster, especially for selecting multiple units. It also minimizes the risk that you'll miss a unit. You can see here that I can click between the chariots. So if you try to individually click on them, there's a chance you might miss a chariot and get the open ground. You can opt to select the icon above a unit as well to select units, which is another option which can be useful if there's a big clump of troops all together. But generally, if there's units in the open, a quick drag box can be useful. Now the tutorial may tell you just to right click where you want the units to go and they'll go to that direction facing that direction. But what if we want them facing a different direction, which most of the time you will want. So instead of just right clicking, hold down right click instead and drag the units where you want them. This will get rid of any formation and put all the units in a line, but this isn't always a big deal. 
This will allow us to rotate the unit to face the direction that's best for them, rather than them just running forward straight ahead. If you do want to maintain a formation with your units, then you'll need to use the alt left mouse button drag method. So those two things alone can definitely save you some time as you can quickly drag to select units and you can put them facing in the direction you want them as soon as you give the order rather than having to move them and then rotate them which just sounds super clunky. One more thing that's useful to know actually is how to cancel an order especially if you alt move an army. Let's say you grab your army to move it but then you change your mind and you don't want to. Now you can just press escape to do this which is all well and good but it's a little bit of a reach away to get to escape so what you can do instead is simply drag your mouse down to the bottom of the screen where your unit cards are, let go of the buttons and the order will be gone. This is usually quicker than having to press escape. If you do accidentally issue an order to move your entire army somewhere you didn't mean to, you can press backspace on the keyboard quickly to halt everything. And lastly, a couple of commands for pathing your units. Normally when you issue a command, a unit will run in a straight line to that destination, but what if we want to go around a corner? Well, if you hold down shift, you'll see a little zigzag appear below your mouse cursor, as you can hopefully see on mine, and then you can right mouse button drag while still holding shift to draw a path where you want the unit to go. You then simply release the mouse and it will follow that path. If you release the mouse on an enemy unit, it will attack the enemy unit at the end of the path as well. So you can draw any old kind of line you want and they will follow it. Although sometimes you do get a weird formation at the end of it. But this is a very useful thing for flanking especially, setting things up so you don't have to worry about turning the corner yourself. Another option for this is kind of setting checkpoints by doing the same thing sort of. Hold down shift and just right click now instead of drag and you can create kind of checkpoints for the unit to follow. You can see I've drawn this little path here and they will follow it and honestly they seem to follow these better than the drawn line. So checkpoint lines usually better than a freehand drawn line but both very useful for setting your units up how you want them. So we got control A to select our entire army, alt left mouse button drag to move an army, quick drag selecting a bunch of units and then alt drag selecting, rotating them. You could draw a path for a certain unit. I want my chariots to come through here. I want my cavalry to come out wide and then come in. All these different commands can make life a lot easier for learning to move your army around the battlefield. It does take some practice and will require you to build up a little bit of muscle memory to get efficient with all of this, but that's just like any game or anything, really. The better you get with all this stuff, the faster you'll be able to micromanage and the easier time you'll have in battles. And this spans across all kinds of Total War games. So there you go, how to move your army in Total War Troy. If you're new to the series, I hope you found this helpful. And hey, if you're not new to the series, I hope you still found this helpful. A lot of these controls are the same in Total War Warhammer as well, so you'll find it all works there too. If you're new to the series, I do have these other videos here for battle guides and such to help you along your way learning Total War Troy. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.